This is the BBC. This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. BBC Radio 2. 10 to the top. Friday's 10 to the top and Mel Elliott is in Hastings. Good morning, Mel. Good morning. Hi. How are you? I'm very well. Are you all right? Yeah. Good. Nice to speak to you. So you enjoy playing piano. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, writing songs about dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got a piano nearby? No. <laughs> I, knew, oh, I knew that was going to be. What a shame. I, I c- deliberately sat a long way from the piano. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are the songs like? So, basically, people tell me all about their dog, their character and that sort of thing. And then I write a personalised song all about their dog. It's kind of like pet portrait, but in song form. But in music, how yeah. cool is that? <laughs> it's fun. And do you sell these songs? <laughs> well, I've sold three. Mostly I do them for free. Right. <laughs> yeah, just because I enjoy it. <laughs> so how many songs have you written about dogs? Oh, I think I've done about 22 now. Cool. Uh, your claim to fame is that um, you once spotted Pete Doherty and Bill Oddy crossing the road together in Shoreditch. Yeah, I just thought it was an odd combination. <laughs> It's a very odd combination, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And you edit a local magazine? I do, yeah. Which one? It's called Get Hastings. What's all the goss in Hastings at the moment? It's sort of, so it's like an arts, culture and community magazine. So I don't know if you've ever been to Hastings, but it's a really yeah, creative happy. place. So we feature local artists and musicians and writers and that sort of thing. It's really good fun. So what's the biggest thing in Hastings at the moment, apart from you being on Tent at the Top? Ooh, So we have Jack in the Green coming up, which is um, May Day, Bank Holiday Weekend, and that is crazy. What is Jack in the Green? Everyone dresses in green and puts flowers and leaves all over themselves. Are you serious? Yeah. (laughs) You're a little bit strange in Hastings, don't you think? Yeah, and people get up at like um, four o'clock in the morning to go and sit on the hill to watch the sunrise. It's it's all very pagan sort of thing, but it's fun. It's really good fun. It sounds like an event definitely not to be missed. I wish you a good Jack in the Green this year. Thank you. I wish you well on 10 to the top. What sort of score are we looking at here, Mel? Oh, I don't know. It really depends on what the questions are. Sometimes I do really well and sometimes I'm just like, hopefully it's not going to be one of those days where I do really, really badly. But let's see. OK, let's see indeed. Are you ready? Yes. Ten to the top. On Radio 2. Got five seconds to answer each question, okay? Yep. Question one for one point. Weather With You was a top ten hit in 1992 for which group? Crowded House. Crowded House is the correct answer. Two points on this next one. In 1997, which band had a two-minute track called Song 2... And it reached number two. Blur. Blur is correct. Going to play a little musical clip now. Okay. The Pet Shop Boys had the new number one on This Week in 1988. Here's part of the intro, but can you give me the title? Mel Elliott knows her stuff. It was <laughs> <So> hot. <laughs> yeah. Do you know Neil and Chris came up with the song in 1986 and originally were going to offer it to either Madonna or Hazel Dean. Oh, wow. Well, I'm glad they didn't. <laughs> yeah, I think we all are. Uh, anyway, I think they made the best decision. They did it very yeah. well themselves. OK, you have a four-point question coming up next. Okay. What kind of day did Bill Withers say it was going to be on his 1978 hit? A lovely day. Lovely day indeed. A five-pointer coming up. Not tempted to play Joker yet? Are you going to hold back? I'm tempted, but I'm worried it's going to be the year question. Can't help you there. 
<laughs> what are we on five? You're on five. It's a five pointer, so ten points if you play your joke and get it right. No, let's let's not. Let's keep going. For five points, let's see whether it's a wise decision. On their 1987 song, which band said there's a rat in my kitchen? The UB40. Yeah. Should have played your joker. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Keep going. Six points on this. Name the band who spent three weeks at number one in 1972 with their tune called Son of My Father. Oh. Oh, no idea. Chicory tip. I couldn't even think of a thing to guess. Yeah, I wouldn't have got that, would I? Chicory tip. Son of my father. Yeah, I know the song. Da, 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 yeah, da, da, no da, da, that one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I shouldn't be singing on radio. <laughs> OK, sadly, back down to one point. Uh, if only you played your joker on that UB40 question. Yeah, I know. Never mind. It's OK. Still plenty of questions to go. Which group talked about counting stars on their 2013 number one single? Oh, God, what are they called? Oh, I can't remember what they're called. One Republic. Yes, that's them. <laughs> <laughs> Still for one point. On this week's top ten in 1980, here's a mod revival group who named themselves after a famous Italian motor scooter brand. Who are they? Oh, it's I'm going to go for Lambretta. It's the Lambrettas, but Lambretta, I'll give you that. Oh, okay. I didn't know whether to say that or Vespa. <laughs> I just picked one. <laughs> Was that a guess? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, well done. Good guess. Yeah, Poison Ivy was the song. And do you know, you'll be impressed with this, it's the only song in chart history that mentions calamine lotion in the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Because <laughs> you use it to treat Poison Ivy. Uh, OK, you have two points on this next question. Here comes your year question. Oh. In what year did Take That hold their farewell press conference and then top the chart for three weeks with a cover version of How Deep Is Your Love? 2002. Yeah, you're not good at these, are you? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> 1996. OK. Well, that's ages ago. Here comes your final question, and you've got to play your joker now. <laughs> so it means it's worth two points. Complete the title of this 2011 smash by Jason Derulo. Don't want to go... Out. Don't want to go home. But do you know what? What? You got a good score, 16 Today? points. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. Your first five questions were great. And then it all went pear-shaped. <laughs> <laughs> Did go a little bit wrong. If only you played your joker. I oh, know, yeah. Oh, well, 16's not bad. 16's a good score. Is it enough? Friday's 10 to the top. Contestant number two lives in Worcester, and she is Sarah Lewis. Good morning. Morning, Gabby. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Tell me all about this daytime raving that you're doing. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think it's a bit of a popular thing at the moment, but one of the pubs in Worcester has just started doing um, daytime discos. Um, so I've been to a couple of those in the last few weeks. Um, yeah, really good fun. They're fantastic, aren't they? Yeah. So what time do they start? The first one started at two and the second one started at four, but they finish by eight. So it's perfect because you can go out for a night out and still be home for <laughs> nine o'clock. <laughs> It's which is great day. when you get over 30. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. And uh, are they pretty wild, these discos? Uh, they can be. I remember there was an announcement went over on the first one about halfway through that they'd run out of Prosecco. So. Oh, that's what I like to hear. 
Because Prosecco is the drink now, especially daytime wise, I guess. Yeah, I think it does seem to be quite popular at the daytime discos, yeah. And what sort of music are they playing in these daytime discos? Um, it varies. Sometimes they've got a theme. So the last one I went to was 80s. Oh, good. So obviously played all 80s music, yeah. which was good. Yeah. Um, the first one was just sort of everything from the 70s upwards, mm-hmm. but all of like the cheesy stuff and the dancey stuff and the disco stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, all good fun. And you're best friends with Boyzone. <laughs> that far but yeah we've got history (laughs) (laughs) tell me about your history so this is going back about 15 years now um went to a boys own concert i go to a lot of concerts um and at this particular concert what they used to do back in the day was they used to do like a competition whereas if you're at the concert you can text a number and then randomly throughout the gig they phone up one of the fans of the concert and get them to join them on stage which was me. And what happened on stage? Were you singing with them? No, they, I wouldn't inflict that on them. No, I just sort of appeared during one of the songs. Yeah. Um, so I was just sat on stage while they were singing the song and then they just sort of had a chat to me and things and took some pictures and then off I went and they carried on the concert. Great. 16 to beat. Yeah. Feeling confident? Um, I'm feeling a little bit nervous now after that. There were some tricky questions there. I think she did really well. So I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Let's see how you get on, OK? Yep. Good luck. Question one. Heart of Glass spent a month at number one in 1979 for which group? Blondie. You're up and running. Two points on this next question. Complete the title of Shania Twain's 1998 chart debut. You're still what? The one. The one it is. And you have three points on this next one. I'm going to play you a musical clip. Pharrell Williams was born this day in 1973, and he was the featured vocalist on this massive 2013 hit for Daft Punk. But what is the song title? Get lucky. Do you know Pharrell first met the guys from Daft Punk at a party for Madonna and was so keen to work with them, he said, even if you just want me to play the tambourine, I'll do it. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, All good so far for you, Sarah. Yeah. Okay. your next question is worth four points. And remember, you still have your joke. I think I might play my joker here. So, this is an eight-pointer. Okay. Good luck. In 1996, a new version of the Mission Impossible theme was a hit for the bass player and the drummer in U2. What are their names? Oh, one's called The Edge. Don't know the other one. The Edge is the guitarist. Oh, okay. Bass player and drummer Adam Clayton... And Larry Mullen Jr. Oh, yeah, of course. Never mind, you had a good run. Let's see if you can have another good run. Yeah. Back to one point now. The 1999 top 10 single, Every Morning, was the biggest UK hit for the American band Sugar What? Sugar Ray? Yes, it was Sugar Ray. Well done. Two points coming up. Which band took the songs In Between Days and Close to Me into the chart in 1985? Ooh, um... Don't know. The Pretenders. It was The Cure. Oh, okay. Yeah, they would have probably played In Between Days at your 80s daytime rave, probably. Possibly, yeah. Good dancey song. Yeah. For one point. In what year did Duran Duran have their first top 10 hit with Girls on Film? I'm going to go 1984. 
It was a little bit before that. It was 1981. Oh, okay. Still for one point. Genesis had their first ever top 10 single this week in 1978 with the song you're about to hear. Give me the title. Stay with me, my love. I hope you always be right here by my side. I don't know. I'm going to go. I'm going to guess. Stay with me. It's definitely worth having a guess. Yeah. It was actually follow you, follow me. Oh, OK. All right. Still for one point. In 1987, two versions of the song I Found Lovin' were on the chart at the same time. DJ Steve Walsh had his cover alongside the original by which group? <sighs> no, I don't know. I'm afraid it was the Fatback Band. OK, here's your final question for a point. Be Faithful spent a fortnight at number one in 2003 for Fat Man Who? Oh, uh, I don't know. Fat Man Jones. Fat Man Scoop. Hey, Sarah, you got seven points. Not a bad score. Yeah, I've done better in the past, but that's okay. It means I get the mug, though, doesn't it? You get the mug. Yeah. You absolutely <laughs> get the mug. Listen, well done. We'll get the mug on the way to you. All right? Thank you. And keep on raving. I will do. Thank you. So, Mel, congratulations. Yay. <laughs> yeah, she had some really tricky questions there. Yeah, I know. They were a little bit tricky. Mind you, so were yours, but you managed to get the joint highest score of the week with 16. Wow. Good, eh? Yeah. So you can be listening to us in the future on a Radio 2 smart speaker. Amazing. Thank you. Really look forward to that. So another week on the best quiz on the radio is over, but don't worry because there's always 30 days worth of 10 to the top to catch up on on BBC Sounds or via your smart speaker. But if you want to do a bit more than listen and actually take part, then all you need to do to apply is email 10 to the top at bbc.co.uk with your name and contact information. Or you can message us on WhatsApp. The number is 08000 288 291 and start your message with the word Joker. And don't forget to put in all your details. It's 08000 288 291. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you back here on Monday for more 10 to the top. 10 to the top on Radio 2. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. one 800 flowerscom is more than your birthday, anniversary, or just because gift-giving destination. We put our hearts into everything we do to help you celebrate all life's special occasions with friends and family. From our farmers and bakers, florists and makers, everything from one 800 flowers is made with love every step of the way because we know that nothing is more important than delivering a smile to learn more visit 1-800-flowers.com slash acast that's 1-800-flowers.com slash acast